just finished groceries and suddenly it never happened in the past. Card payments didn't work. I cannot pay with my card and fortunately I had some uh, tickets in my pocket, otherwise I would not be able to pay for my groceries. So it has been a day since the world has turned away from Russia. With all the economic sanctions, one had to ask how it affects our day-to-day -day lives. I had no idea that those sanctions will hit me as soon as this afternoon when I went to the supermarket. So I just finished groceries and suddenly card payments didn't work. And Fortunately, I had some uh, tickets in my pocket, otherwise I would not be able to pay for my groceries. It never happened in the past. This is quite an unpleasant situation and it just says that when there's crisis like this, it's better to have some cash with you. So I'm gonna withdraw some money just to be safe because I cannot pay with my card and uh, without possibility to pay for the food, then uh, you are just screwed. It might be a coincidence, it might be an unexpected payment system outage but it never happened to me here in Czech Republic and after years of living a minimalist life I was in need for cash for the first time in my life but I couldn't get any anywhere in any substantial amount so this is becoming really serious I had to try two ATMs before I could find a functional one the first one was uh, out of commission and the second one just didn't want to read my card so i'm thinking that there might be a bank run soon on all the banks regardless if we have sanctions or not people will just want to withdraw all their money so what's the point of having money in a banking account when you cannot use it to buy your food the news were full of pictures from russia showing how people wait in line at atms hoping to withdraw their money how they buy everything inside because they know there will be a shortage of everything very soon so i just tried to find out if i can withdraw all my money from atm and i realized that most of the banks have like weekly limits of about 50 to 100k per week if you have more money in your bank account then this is definitely not possible to withdraw all your money at once so it's a good way to be diversified if you have multiple bank accounts in that way you can have uh, some degree of certainty that you can uh, withdraw small sum of your money relatively quickly when shit hit the fan so to conclude if you want to be prepared for the next bank run know your withdrawal limits but not all banks are the same the small ones usually have more strict limits while larger more reputable ones will allow you to withdraw larger amounts so with that in mind now you know how much money to keep in your account next thing to be aware of is how much money you can send in and out of your account in EU, we have fortunately something called instant payment that allows you to send your money out and in in a matter of seconds but in my experience it works flawlessly up until about 2000 euros or so because there are some anti-money laundering back office processes that checks larger sums of money that are sent out and lastly map out your closest ATM so you can quickly run out and withdraw your cash because when the shit hits the fan you want to be quicker than other people in reality you don't have much time before financial system collapses just a day after the rumors about worldwide sanctions against Russia I got a message from my friend asking for help the message reads hi my friend Sberbank is going to be sanctioned people are taking money out like crazy internet banking and atms are collapsing as we speak what would happen if they collapse what would happen to my mortgage so i got a question from my friend who is really afraid about his mortgage because his mortgage is at Sberbank. and based on the newest news governments will want to sanction all russian banks and of course people are panicking they are withdrawing all their money atms are dry from cash 
and I'm really afraid that the system will collapse, at least for Sberbank. So if you have any money deposited in a Russian bank, just withdraw it as fast as possible. As for mortgage, I still think that they just cannot sell your house. So if you have a contract with your bank that you have to pay monthly mortgage payment, then it's still valid. And in the worst case scenario, when those banks would need a fast liquidity, then the only option they can do is to sell their mortgage package, their portfolio to another financial institutions. They just cannot claim your house. They just cannot cancel the contract. So don't be worried. I think you are safe. So I was partly right that everything will be okay, at least for a small number of clients. Bigger clients like companies, non-profits and governments are not insured and they lost way way more money. Like one of the Czech countries, Vysočina, they chose Berbank for the 2.5 billion deposit just because it got slightly better interest than other commercial banks. Now they cannot pay salaries and has to shut down their operations. As for those being in debt, at my job, there's an inside joke. It goes like this. If your bank owes you money, it's your problem. But if you owe bank money, a lot of money, millions and more, it is their problem. So in the same way, a lot of people can sleep in peace, not having to worry about their homes because mortgage agreements are not callable. Banks just cannot call your loan or mortgage in a whim. That's not how it works. Also, no one wants to dump real estate market. Not right now. Anyway, let's get back to the Sberbank collapse. So here's what happened in chronological order. On 27th of February, Sberbank closed all its branches, internet banking is not accessible, situation sounds serious. Their PR manager response was, sorry guys, for inconvenience, we are not able to provide full service. They even limited the card operations to 1000 check rounds a day, enough to buy food but nothing else. On 2nd of March, Putin banned cash exports in foreign currencies from Russia, which only accelerated bank run from Russian citizens. Meanwhile, Sberbank just got away from being sanctioned, but the reputation damage was done and Sberbank lost their banking license in Czech, Austria, Hungary and Serbia. It felt like a domino. On 9th of March, Resolution Fund starts to proceed payments to 106 thousands insured Sberbank clients. About half of them had less than 500 bucks on their accounts, those were lucky ones who managed to bank run soon enough. Anyway, just 7 days after the collapse, people were able to access their own money through resolution fund. 30 billions out of 37 billions. That's a lot of money for a small bank. Imagine what could happen if more banks fall as well. There would be no happy ending for anyone. What would happen in that case? Well, since there is not enough money for everyone, you would get a small portion from the resolution fund. The rest would be depending on how fast and how well will your bank be liquidated. Chop and cut into small pieces and sold to other banks. Only then you will get your money, if any. It can take weeks to months how do you want to pay for your food and rent in the meantime my last question is could fake news be the reason for the collapse media and national banks say so but really who in their right minds would listen to official narrative when your money is in stake to end this video here is my take always listen to your gut diversify your funds and have an exit strategy ready